Joseph B2, welcome to the coffee pod. My name is Tishy Z. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Let's get it. I do do girl trips. I, I love my girlfriends. And um, I think you do everything on the trip. And whatever you do, you're supposed to keep it on the trip. That's right? Right. You don't come back. So that's start... the don't. The don't is whatever y'all do, don't... don't bring it back. A woman on a podcast says, if you're not down to be a 304 on the girl's trip, guys, we're talking about girl's trips here. If you're not down to be a 304 on the girl's trip, she says you shouldn't attend. We came to oh. and go. Oh. If you just going and not, hey, babe, you might need to wait for the church retreat. You might not need to come on this <laughs> nah, trip. No, you ain't got to. Everybody do what they want to do. I'm pro-choice. No, because when you're not, you, when you're not pro, you're anti. I'm sorry. You guys hear that? You guys hear that? So the reason a lot of women don't want to go on girls trips with other women who aren't participating is because they don't want them to go back and snitch. On who? On their men. Story time. I went on my first uh, girls trip, what I thought was a girls trip. Mm -hmm. uh, this girl that I've known forever was like, hey, pay for your hotel room, pay for your flight. Let's go. Cool. Let's do it. Um, I go. Fly on a plane, get there. She picks me up in some dude's car. Um, she said there was a friend that was going to be there, but he was just going to kind of, you know, not really be around us a whole lot. Just kind of hang out, say hi. Right. No. She used me as an alibi to cheat on her husband. If you're not pro, you're anti, and you are not welcome up in here. We are supporters of suckers and all things above okay we are a pro everything up here. they shared a room he was there the entire time i was the third wheel it was so awkward i even said something to her about it and it just went right over her head she didn't care um i ended up coming home early mm. um and i told her husband did i do the right thing Dang. would you have done that did i I would want someone to tell me. Mm. How would you like to know that your girl is going on one of these trips? She's not going to do anything, but her friends are all about it. I had the most awkward situation on a girl's what? trip where I was the only, I'm the only married girl in my uh, group of friends. Mm -hmm. I ended up rooming with somebody that was single. Mm -hmm. And at the end of a fun night, she wanted to bring someone back. Oh, okay. And so that was awkward because now I'm in my room and I'm like, there's two guys in my room, like drinking and still hanging out. It was a room that had a suite in the wait, middle. Wait, wait. Yeah. She picked two guys? It was two. It was like a guy and his, it was a guy and, and his, his friend. friend. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so that was supposed to be for you. And, and ladies, imagine your man being in that exact same scenario. Even if he doesn't do anything, you are not going to be comfortable about that. So as I stated before, if you are in a relationship, certain shit you cannot do with your single friends. In my room on the phone, like, um, there's dudes in the room, like I feel mad, uncomfortable. Like it just was, It so my thing is, respect your friend's boundaries. Also know who's, go know who's going on the trip, but also yeah. I think I have to be wiser because maybe that wasn't the trip I should have been on. I don't think I have to talk about why men should probably avoid women who think girls and nights out while they're in relationships girls trips i'm sorry while they're in relationships are a good thing or something that should be entertained i don't think i need to do that anymore by now you you, you get it if you got a girlfriend that's going and she's married and she's flirting with other guys let her do her thing it's not your business Ooh. don't you go running and telling everybody oh my <laughs> god girl she was talking to everybody and she knows she's married Ooh. no the girls trips you're supposed to have an amazing yeah. fun time what what the hell is this? When I said, when you get into a relationship, that girl's trip and girl's night out shit, you gotta dead that. Y'all know exactly why. Y'all be trying to play this little sweet, innocent role, like don't nothing happen, oh, we just hanging out with our girls. Dear Oloni, I am sick with guilt. My girls and I, all in relationships, engaged, recently went on a girls trip to Danky Sound, Ibiza. Hey. <laughs> and all three of us cheated on our men. Personally, I enjoyed every minute of it. My man doesn't really pleasure me sexually, but we are so compatible in every other way. Sex is decent enough, but he's not as adventurous or attentive as I truly desire. This guy I met in Ibiza rocked my world, and I was shivering in an orgasm. Oh my goodness. She was shivering in an orgasm 
And when she says shivering, she's not talking about like the full body, right? She just means one leg. It's going like that. Y'all know damn well we be on straight bullshit on them damn girls trips. But y'all try to keep it hush hush from the men so that they don't know. So they think that don't nothing happen. But I'm telling because we need to do better. So my statement stands. Single friends is going girls night out, girls trip, all that shit. Keep your at the house if you are in a relationship. Brunch and mimosas, shopping, mani petties, shit like that. That is your time to shine with your single friends. All that other shit girl just just stay home just stay home it ain't worth it y'all go ahead and keep saying i'm capping and i'm gonna pick me and all that shit go ahead but you know everything i'm saying is actual factual so keep playing with me if you want to all right so of course you're gonna call her pick me because she probably wants to get married she probably wants men to take her seriously and she knows that most men well most men will let their woman do whatever and they think, oh, I trust her, man. Don't trust, don't trust, don't trust a woman completely. You never trust a woman completely. You never trust anybody completely. The problem with a lot of relationships and when it comes to like the girl strip thing is, is a lot of women want to not compromise anything for that relationship, right? They don't understand that they can't do the same things they used to do. A woman should not be in a relationship or married and be hanging out with a bunch of single women. I just got back from a girl's trip and found out my man left and disappeared. He left me with nine kids. I can't hold this shit in no more. I've been trying to hold it in and hold it in and hold it in. You know what I'm saying? Didn't want to tell nobody about it, but this is of shit. So how about I come home from work last night? Now, my kids was left here with my baby daddy. Now, I was closed on Wednesdays, and he keep my goddamn kids. This ain't nothing new. This is something he already know. So, thank God that my oldest daughter was here. So, when I got here last night, this was nowhere to be found, y'all. This shit is... So, how about when I get home, this done packed up and got the out of here. He done moved all his shit up at my... So, I'm calling his phone... I'm blowing him up. Remind you, this is the this is my closet where all his stuff is at, where it normally be. Ain't shit in the house. He done packed the stuff out of here. He's a man. like I'm calling his phone and asking him like, what's going on? What's the problem? I mean, what you upset for? You know what I'm saying? Why you leave? Like, why you leave? Why you being a coward? Why you couldn't face me? Why you had to sneak and do it? Why you had to wait until I go to work and then try to go do it? Girl, stop, stop, stop. You know what I'm saying? So. The shit is all it borders down to y'all. Y'all know I just went on this trip. I just left and went on this trip and he wasn't feeling the goddamn trip. Mm. I'm going with a whole bunch of people that don't that he don't know and all this and this and that and um how do that look? I'm in a whole lot of relationship and I'm going out of town with people that I don't even I don't know and all this shit. You mean to tell me we've been together for ten years. We've been together for ten and a half goddamn years, going on eleven years. Got six kids with this nigga. Like, really? Oh, okay. So, three kids are not his. Okay. What? Because I go on a trip, you gonna mother your shit up. And I hope he did a DNA test. It sounds like the type of situation where she's just having these kids popping up. He's probably been thinking about it. Listen, man. Whole lot of red flags here. And you gonna dip up out of here? Really? Hmm. And leave me? I just moved in over here. Just leave me with this high that I gotta pay by my goddamn self? <laughs> man took off kick rocks fast not slow yo like that's crazy all right this shit crazy this shit blowing my mind y'all this shit blowing my mind the red put that shit up put that up put that up go in there and sit down i advise you to go in there and sit down for real this shit is crazy i don't know what the f no this shit crazy as hell but it's bothering me because i'm trying to figure out like why like why why what i mean what what's the problem nigga nigga you that insecure you that insecure what what possibly could i be doing when i go out of town niggas the whole time i've been with you he ain't never known me to goddamn cheat on him see that's what they'll tell you man when you don't want them to go on those ghost trips right and i i assume the guy is leaving her not the kids he's probably going to visit the kids he's probably going to do what he can to help co-parent but you're going off having girls trips and your man is telling you not to go, but you're going anyways. It sounds like it's not the first time it's happened. Who are you going to believe? The woman with nine kids and some of them aren't his or the man who sounds like he knows what's up with the girls trips 
and she went against his better judgment. I just want to share a little story time about why I don't do any of these girls' night out situations. Let's hear it. When I lived in New York City, I worked for a very large corporate law firm. Just to give you an idea of the scope, Donald Trump and some other high financial players were our clients. So it wasn't like a slip and fall law firm. And everyone that worked there had to be vetted pretty heavily because of the type of clients that we had. Um, a lot of the women would do these girls night out things and I, they would ask me to go and I never wanted to do it because it's just not my scene. Um, I had rejected them so many times and a lot of them were like putting pressure on me that I should do it. So I, I gave in one day. Right. So it was a Friday night. There were about eight of us. We went to a club. Everyone started drinking, getting drunk. Um, throughout the evening, women would disappear. Some would go to the bathroom, not come back. Right. Go to get a drink, not come back. This had me in sort of a high alert situation. The question is, where did they go? I was feeling a little stressed. Pound town. And, and because I'm one of these people that has a high level of situational awareness, my head was moving like a chicken. Um, one of the women that was there was this tiny little administrative assistant. She was so cute and everyone loved her at the firm. Mm. She was a sweet little good girl. She didn't wear makeup. She wasn't a party girl. She was about five foot two, sweet and cute as a butt. And, and I saw her drinking, getting drunk, and then two guys, they obviously came together. They started sitting with her, drinking with her, laughing and talking with her. Right. Right away, you know, I was on high alert. I could see that these guys were wolves and that their intentions were not good. So I kind of inched my way over to sit closer to her so I could babysit. And she always kind of gave me this brush off, like, get away. And the guys were doing that too, like, get away mm. or come join us, that kind of thing. I, I didn't want to join them. To her, she was saving them. To them, she was C blocking, right? But I wanted to keep an eye on her. They moved around in the club and wherever they went, I went with them. At one point, she left with them. But the way she left with them. They, those two guys, literally lifted her body over their head and carried her out like a rotisserie chicken. I ran after them, got into the parking lot. She got into their car and I was screaming for her to get out of the car mm. and get away from them. She rolled down the car window. She cursed me out. F-U-B, you're jealous that it's not you. Wow. Leave me the F alone. She don't want to be safe. Drink the coffee. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. I was pretty much in shock. The car screeched off. I stood there with my jaw hanging open, went home that evening, had the worst weekend because hmm. I thought maybe she was kidnapped, chained up in a basement, she was okay. She was chained up, but she was just fine. Just Something horrible. Let me stop before I find out this chick's dead. When I got into work on Monday, I went over to her desk to see if she made it in. And there she was, typing with a big smile on her face and gave me kind of this look like WTF. Like, what do you want? For the streets. I'm fine. I didn't speak to her after that, you know, only in a workplace capacity. But the situation overall left me shook. Wow. Now, like I said earlier, this was one of three situations, each one tragic. And in the interim, I've learned that being with women, especially women that are drinking, puts me into potentially dangerous situations. Because the way I see it, women will sell their souls for attention. 
Oh, yeah. And if you're out at night with alcohol, dressing a certain way, behaving a certain way, moving their bodies provocatively, what kind of attention do you think is going to come? And women love this attention. Personally, I like to go to the club maybe once a year. I don't go to socialize. I just want to hear very, very loud music like at a decibel level where I can feel it in my heart. I'm what they call a bass head. But with me, I'm sure to always hire a bodyguard for the evening. Wow. I have a great guy in Hollywood, pay him a flat rate. You got him for the whole night. He'll pick me up in his Suburban, get me inside and out. I don't have to worry about Ubers, standing in the street, right. making phone calls. And while I'm in the club, always tell him, don't let anyone near me. Women, men, no one. I just want to hear loud music and I want to dance. And I don't ever go out wearing high heels and short dresses. I go in wearing gym clothes, tank top, leggings, sneakers. These are cobra pits. And when you mix that with alcohol and women who instinctively love attention, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. So if you have females that are going to clubs, get a bodyguard. Mm. And if you can't do that, don't go at all. It's just not worth the risk. So this is why I don't hang out with women anymore. Because a group of females, it's like being in a hen house. <laughs> and it's like all of the hens unlock the door so the foxes can get in. Right. That shit's funny. The way she described the hen house, you know, I'm just imagining foxes coming in there, effing the hens up. Uh -huh. And know. not only that, they drape themselves in fragrance and provocative clothing right. to lure the foxes in. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll take my bodyguard. What do you guys think of that story? Wow. So much right there, man. So much right there. First thing that came to mind for me, a lot of the chicks that people think are innocent, like she's quiet, she's good, she's to herself. Most likely not. They are the real freaks when the lights go out at the club, right? You'd be surprised because a lot of the times people look at them a certain way and then they're trying to prove otherwise or trying to fit in. You just can't judge everybody the way that they present themselves. Now, the thing with the future wife gets exposed for cheating during her bachelorette party. So you guys can hear the friend in the background screaming, he's got a girl, right? While the chick is there in his ear, begging him saying, please, please tonight, please bust my cheeks, please fast, not slow, fast, not slow, please. Let's play from the beginning one more time. He shrugged like not again, right? Like this is a weekly occurrence for him. He's like, ah, not another one. Cheated on my husband in the back of a car in front of my house. And I cheated on my husband of eight years in the back of a parked car less than a block away from my house last night. I don't know what came over me, but I was out drinking with the devil. <laughs> yes. My girlfriends and I got a little too tipsy and accepted a ride home from a guy I met at the bar. He had been flirting with me all night and I guess I had reciprocated a little more than I realized. So he offered me a ride home and I accepted. He drove me home, but I had him stop about a block away from my house because I didn't want him to know where I lived. After he parked, he leaned over to kiss me. Within two minutes, I was in his back seat with my pants off. Two to three minutes tops, no condom, no pullout, and I'm not on the pill. But apparently, a dumb Jesus. At least she's honest. Christ. 
So I get out of his car, stumble toward my house, and when I walk in, my husband is standing by the bathroom door. I thought I was busted, but our four-year-old had gotten up in the middle of the night and needed to use the bathroom. She isn't totally potty trained yet, so she wakes us up to assist when this happens. My husband simply said, hey babe, how was your night? I don't remember what I said back, but I remember him whispering as I walked by. Since you got to have a good time tonight, can I have one too? Really quick, before you go to sleep. No. I should have said no. No. But instead, I let him have sex with me right after I had sex with this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Hey guys, you're going to have to watch this video somewhere else because this shit's insane. Let's keep watching. Stranger. Good God. What is wrong with me? Is it possible that my husband saw what was going on? You can literally see down the street where we were parked if you were standing where my husband was standing when I walked in the house. He couldn't have seen what was going on inside of the car, but he definitely could have seen me getting out of the car, especially one that he did not recognize for that matter. I have never done anything like this before. I am flirtatious, but I have no Yo! Guys, I did not anticipate that. Me and my dude just did the same look. We just did the same look. Put it on the screen. This man drinks coffee. Come on. Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. Never crossed any physical lines since getting married. I feel awful. I don't know what to do. Should I confess? Should I deny no matter what? How likely is it that my husband saw what was going on and is just testing me? What can I do to find out if he knows anything? What can I ask him? It's driving me crazy. I'm a nervous wreck. Can I say that I was too drunk to consent? I don't mean that I would press charges on the guy or anything. I don't even know who he was. And I was definitely drunk, but I knew what I was doing when I consented. Would I have done it sober? Absolutely not. But it was as much my decision as it was his. But still, could I possibly use that as an excuse? I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate for this, but hopefully I'll get some advice too. I think when it comes to going out, what I definitely don't understand is why a woman would go to a place where there's only alcohol and music and no meals. I'm not talking about wings and, 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 you know, finger foods. I'm talking about this place is mainly there to get people drunk and play music. There's just no point in that because people are going to dance and you're impairing your judgment with that alcohol and you leave room for mistakes. Now, like restaurants and things like that, it's different, or a place where they actually serve real food, it's different. <laughs> you don't wanna be the controlling type where you're telling her, you can't do this, you can't do that. There's a way to go about this, man, so that you have the upper hand and you're not seeming like, oh, I'm making you do this. You simply set the bar and the tone in the beginning, and you say, hey, you're welcome to do what you want. You decide to go out with your friends and party it up in, um, you know, on some girls' trip, you can do that, right? When you come back, that's the end of you and me, right? You've decided to purposely violate it, um, what you know I don't tolerate in this situation. Until next time, guys, I'm out. Peace.